Our language stop will be Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Because of its central location between the Indian Ocean and the South China Sea, Malaysia has traditionally been a meeting point for traders and travelers from both the East and West. Kuala Lumpur translated as Muddy Confluence got its name due to being located at the confluence of the Klang and Gombak rivers. Kuala Lumpur, which is located in West Malaysia, is the federal capital city of Malaysia and is one of the fastest growing metropolitan regions in the country. As a result, Malaysia has a multicultural population consisting of Malays, Chinese, Indians, and numerous indigenous peoples. Although Malay is the official language, English is widely spoken, especially in business and schools. There are many other languages also used in Malaysia, such as Cantonese, Mandarin, Hokkien, Hakka, Tamil, and Thai. When looking around Kuala Lumpur, posters and advertising are multi-language, sometimes consisting of English, Chinese, and Malay. Our ethnicity stop in, is San Francisco's Chinatown, one of the oldest Chinatowns in America. The opening of Chinatown, known as Dragon Gate, was created in the 70s and is notable for being created in an authentically Chinese way. When looking around San Francisco's Chinatown, you're exposed to many distinct characteristics. Narrow streets, signs in Chinese, red lanterns, bright colors, and unique Chinese architecture. There are also features meshed in Chinatown distinct to San Francisco, like cable cars and impact, impacted urban dwellings. San Francisco Chinatown has shops you would see in any city, but all are connected by their shared Chinese theme and heritage. Chinatown was created by oppressive laws and racial tension. Although there were unfortunate forces that created the district, it became a place where Chinese immigrants were nurtured by their community and could get their start on the American dream. Eventually, in the early 20th century, an earthquake arose and with the help of fires decimated Chinatown. There was then a wealthy man named Look Tin Eli had the idea to make a new Chinatown with an eastern look that would attract tourists. The new buildings found in Chinatown were now a mixture of Edwardian architecture and theatrical looking Chinese-esque buildings. Finally, we will visit our religious stop, the Vatican City, which has been one of the most influential religious centers in the world for the last several hundred years. The area now known as the Vatican has always been a religious center ever since the Romans who created a temple to the goddess Sibyl. It has been the center of Christianity since the foundation of St. Peter's Basilica by Constantine in the 4th century, and at a later stage the permanent seat of the Pope. The importance of the Roman bishop is largely derived from his role as a traditional successor to St. Peter, to whom Jesus gave the keys of heaven and the powers of binding and loosing, naming him as the rock upon which the church would be built. Each year, millions of people from around the globe flock to this location to view the church center. It is in the center of Rome, Italy, and its Roman architecture can be clearly seen throughout the city. A majority of the buildings in the city and the central St. Peter's Square were built in the Romanesque period of architecture during the 15th century. The architecture of the buildings, along with the numerous statues and pieces of art depicting religious figures or events, further denotes the religious significance of the city.